the United States Space Force has been in the media for a while now, with some people not quite understanding why the United States needs a Space Force. Regardless, the whole idea is very much real, and has got many people talking. Recently, the US Space Force has defended its newly unveiled camouflage uniforms. This was after they were quickly memed online. Others thought it was funny as to why Space Force had to have camouflage in space, with some people saying who are they hiding from. The uniform depicts the typical camo colour. Space Force has said though that the uniform is well underway, and that they're very happy with the design. One person, however, said the following about the decision. I know this is hard to understand, but on the left there is a picture of a camouflage, and on the right there is a picture of space. Study these carefully until you see the difference. Deborah had this to say about the uniform. I don't get why they use camo. It's not original and it doesn't make sense. Why is this needed? Regardless of the uniform, why do we need a Space Force? However, another person had this to say. This is very funny, but all these comments just reflect that you don't understand the issue. Space capabilities are based in space, but the operations are not. Sometimes they're in the field with the units that need to support those capabilities. Space Force isn't Star Trek. So what is Space Force? For those unaware, Space Force made headlines for being announced on the 20th of December 2019, although there were talks before this. It sounds like a joke, but on the 18th of June 2018, President Donald Trump said that plans were being put into place to begin a Space Force. This military service would be operating in space, and everything that revolves around space. This is the first of its kind and it got many people asking questions. One being, why do we need a space force? If there's no threat beyond our planets, why is this necessary? According to researchers, there's no evidence that extraterrestrial life exists, so for some it does seem like a strange move. Vice President Mike Pence then came forward and started to give more details about the project, saying that Space Force will fall under the Air Force in the same way the Marine Corps fall under the Department of the Navy. Officials have said that creating Space Force would cost in the region of two to three billion dollars, and will require over 14,000 people. Mike Pence said the following about Space Force. Just as in the past when we created the Air Force, establishing the Space Force is an idea whose time has come. The space environment has fundamentally changed in the last generation. What was once peaceful and now uncontested is now crowded, and adversarial. Mr. Trump then carried on by saying the following. I'm hereby directing the Department of Defense and Pentagon to immediately begin the process necessary to establish a Space Force. This will act as the sixth branch of the armed forces. That's a big statement. We're going to have an Air Force and we're going to have the Space Force. Separate but equal. Interestingly, some have said this comes down to money, and this can be backed up with what Mark Altrid said. He was the Executive Secretary of the National Space Council from 1989 to 1992. He had this to say. Space is a place where there's now tens of billions of dollars in infrastructure. Everything from financial transactions to GPS that guides your car is controlled from space, or at least facilitated in space. Not just that, but there's also celestial objects that contain trillions of dollars worth of materials. Recently, NASA have announced that a giant asteroid known as Psyche contains enough precious metals to make everyone on Earth a billionaire. The incredible statement was announced shortly before NASA said they're going to investigate the asteroid. It's over 140 miles in diameter and can be found between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. NASA hoped they will be able to launch a mission in 2022. It's even caught the attention of private companies and space mining companies that hope to take a slice of the asteroid for themselves. Researchers have estimated it's worth over 10,000 quadrillion. This has also brought in people who want to invest in space mining. One person called Mitch Hunter said the following to the BBC. Once you set up the infrastructure, then the possibilities are almost infinite. 
there is an astronomical amount of money to be made by those bold enough to rise to the challenge of the asteroid rush. Another planet that would make you instantly rich is that of Kenkri E, also known as the Diamond Planet. Known as 55 Kenkri E, the rest of planets made almost entirely out of diamonds, and it's expected to be roughly 8 times the collective mass of our planet Earth. Unfortunately, if you planned on mining the planets to father its precious gems, you would find the entire planet to be so hostile that it's most likely almost entirely covered in lava. The planet is expected to be tidally locked, which means there rests a permanent day side and a permanent night side, as there's no rotation to create a day and night cycle. This leaves the day side of the planet to be more than 1,700 degrees Celsius in temperature, a temperature more than hot enough to turn iron into liquid. Its gravity works out to be more than 8 times that of Earth's, and the large amount of data concerning surface temperature variations have been connected to a large amount of possible volcanic activity, and this releases large clouds of dust that can cover the whole planet and turn it into darkness. If that doesn't make mining operations seem near impossible, the orbit of the planet around its sun takes less than 18 hours to complete. That means that an entire year on 55 Kenkari is left than a single day on Earth, making landing and launching to and from the planet nearly impossible to maintain. Interestingly, it's not just the US government who are interested in space. The revolutionary founder of Microsoft that helped to lead the world into the age of information, Mr. Bill Gates is one of the leading pioneers of the modern age. He has dedicated his nearly limitless fortune and time into forming the non-profit organisation known as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which is named after himself and his wife of whom helped to start the organisation. This was in order to help tackle a lot of the problems that plague the world that we see today. Not only has this proven to be an incredible fruitful endeavour, causing dramatic changes in poor countries, as well as saving a countless amount of lives, but it's led to incredible technological breakthroughs in the realm of sustainability and industrial revolution in poverty-stricken areas. Due to this work, Bill Gates has become an expert when discussing future projections of the world, and the effects of his work as well as others leading him to make astonishing accurate predictions about the future. So when Bill Gates comes out with a new idea or backs an idea it usually makes the rounds on social media, He's most recently been backing a company by the name of EarthNow. This company is looking at putting a number of satellites that will provide live video in virtual real time. However, it very quickly started to get criticism. The pitch of the idea stated they would create satellites that could see in any corner of the globe, and provide live videos with a delay of only around a second. It seems to have piqued the interest of investors, as it's already been announced that Airbus, the SoftBank Group and Bill Gates will be investing. The initial funding is said to focus primarily on maturing the overall system designed to deliver innovative and unique real-time Earth observation services. Although it sounds like we're years away from getting this, it's actually been reported they plan to have the satellites around Earth by 2020. Some of these satellites have already been deployed, and the highly advanced satellites will be lining our Earth within a few years. As mentioned, Bill Gates is one of the investors, and over the years he has done some incredible work. But the worry here is that the company has said they will sell the service to the government and enterprise clients. It's not so much who it's going to. The worry is what will that person do with this kind of technology. Of course, things like this can have a very positive impact, for example, the company has listed a lot of potential uses for its network, some of which include catching illegal fishing in the Ags, watching hurricanes and typhoons as they develop, detecting forest fires the moment they start, and watching volcanoes the instant they start to erupt. Researchers have said it's an exciting time to be alive as many missions to space are coming up. Elon Musk and his company SpaceX has plans to land on the Red Planet, he is currently working with experts and astrophysicists that are in the process of devising new ways to replenish the Martian atmosphere. Not only that, but they also plan to repair the planet's ecosystem to make it sustainable for human life. They hope to have achieved this by 2030. 
If this fails, NASA have said they're looking at putting people on the red planet, saying that they again hope to do this by 2030. So my question to you guys is what do you make of Space Force and their new uniform? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.